Did you know that the knight can move to every single square of a chessboard without moving to the same square twice? Meaning that the knight is going to go to every single square only once. In today's video, I'm going to explain and show you how to perform the knight's tour. The knight's tour is a puzzle in which you have to move the knight to all 64 squares of a chessboard without moving to the same square twice. For example, let's say you go to F2, let's say you go to E4, now you cannot go back to F2, you've already visited F2 before. So let's say you go to G3, once again, now you cannot go to either E4 nor H1, you've visited both of those squares before, you will have to go to somewhere like H5, F5, E2, something like that. Today I'm going to teach you how to perform the Knight's Tour, so you're going to be able to impress your friends, impress yourself, impress everyone, and we're going to do this by following a couple of rules. Let me show you. The first rule we're going to follow is moving counterclockwise. The second rule is going to be moving to the square closest to the edge, and in general moving to the square that is the most limited. Why do we do this? Because we want to leave all the passive squares, or we want to fill in, sorry, all the passive squares all, or the squares closest to the edge first, and then the ones in the middle. It's easier to get the ones in the middle. And you're going to see what I mean later. So I'm going to do this for a while. I'm leaving pawns on the way, of course, to signify where my knight has been. And eventually you're going to reach a position like this in which you don't have to be scared, don't worry. You're forced to go to F3, beggars can't be choosers. And in this position you're going to be confused, you're going to say, well, okay, I have two squares here. Both of them are pretty limited, but we're, we're going counterclockwise, remember that. That's very important. So we're going to go to H4, to G6, to H8, F7. Going to the corner is kind of a no-brainer. Uh, when you're doing this, meaning that it's it's an easy choice because this is the 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 most limiting kind of square you you could go to a corner, and eventually you're gonna reach this position, and this is what I meant, because we left all these central squares available. Now we can start occupying them. Now that our our knight is starting to struggle to find some squares. So for example, we have two options: e3 or f4. But we're going counterclockwise, closest to the edge. So this is closer to this edge, we're going to go to f4, very important. Then we're going to go closer to this edge, e6. Well, kind of the same here, d3. And now this is, this is kind of the most difficult part of the, this whole puzzle, so stay with me. You're going to be forced to go to the middle. And this is something that, it's fine, this is the reason why we left the middle for so, so late. But once again, this is where it gets a little bit unintuitive. This is where we break the rule. Here, after something logical like knight c6, which is going counterclockwise, now you have to do a little bit of calculation. This is the most difficult part of the puzzle. This is why it's so complicated. Here you can go wrong in so many ways. I've tried this before. I think I, I failed. Maybe I could have... Uh, the, maybe there's a way of saving that. But you have to do a little bit of calculation. I'm going to calculate knight d4, which looks counterintuitive because we've already talked about going counterclockwise um, and closest to the edge. This is closer to the edge. But if we calculate a little bit, d4, f5, h6, now we follow the rule again. We're going to find out, this is very difficult, but stay with me, that after all these moves, we're going to reach this position in which we're, we're solving the puzzle after that. This is the calculation part. Let me show you. Let me prove that to you. You're going to say, Dave, you're crazy, Noah. Or maybe I'm a little bit nervous. Maybe I am crazy. We're moving to this. Once again, we're, we're retaking or we're following the rules we, we follow for so far. We broke the rule for a while just because we calculated a little bit. And we found out that it was fine. So now we get to this position. And if we calculated it from like 10 moves away. Now we're going to be quite confident that knight f6, knight e4, knight c3, knight d5, knight e3, knight c4, knight d6, and we officially solve the knight's tour. Just like that. Now because the knight is on d6, we can pretty much put a pawn here. That's going to be it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you're struggling with it, Please ask me anything on the comment section. I hope it was entertaining. I think that this is pretty cool. And as always, have a nice day.